This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Naramin Shea. Fifty years ago this month, the U.S. began raining down bombs on Laos in what would become the largest bombing campaign in history. From June 1964 to March 1973, the U.S. dropped at least two million tons of bombs on the small, landlocked Southeast Asian country. That's the equivalent of one plane load every eight minutes, 24 hours a day, for nine years, more than were dropped on Germany and Japan during World War II. The deadly legacy of the Vietnam War lives on today in the form of unexploded cluster bombs, which had about a 30 percent failure rate when they were dropped from American planes over large swaths of Laos. Experts estimate that Laos is littered with as many as 80 million bombies, or bomblets, baseball-sized bombs found inside cluster bombs. Well, since the bombing stopped four decades ago, tens of thousands of people have been injured or killed as a result. Last year, Democracy Now! spoke to Tumi Selampan, a bomb accident survivor and victim assistance advocate. He explained how a bomb exploded when he was an eight-year-old child collecting bamboo shoots. One day, I need to find some bamboo shoots for, to feed my family to make a soup. So, um, and um, when I saw the bamboo shoots and I tried to dig in for bamboo shoots, after that, the bombing and explode to me. What you call a bombi, like a bomb that exploded? Yes, because uh, that time in uh, my village or in those areas, we have a lot of the bombing. And uh, we don't know the bombing underground. And when we dig in for bamboo shoes, and then they, they explode, and then explode to me. Yeah. And it's good. I left, uh, I lost my left hand. And, um, that time is very, very difficult for me to continue my life. For more on Laos, we go now to New Mexico Public Television in Albuquerque to speak with Karen Coates and Jerry Redfern, the co-authors of a remarkable new book called Eternal Harvest, The Legacy of American Bombs in Laos. They spent more than seven years in Laos working on the book. Karen and Jerry, welcome to Democracy Now! Karen, let's begin with you. Why did you write this book and talk about the significance of this month, the 50th anniversary, of the largest, most significant— uh, well, the largest uh, bombing in history? Well, we were in the country in 2005 to work on an article for Archaeology magazine. And at that point, we'd been living in the region for several years. We'd visited Laos before. We knew the history as Americans, but we had no idea the extent of the problem until we were there that trip. And in about two weeks during that time, we had heard of more than 20 accidents around the region where we were. And we sort of looked at each other and said, this is much bigger, a much bigger problem than we realized. And one day, we went to a local hospital and uh, encountered a 10-year-old boy who had been in his farm field digging when he hit something, most likely a bombie, which blew up in his face. And we, we saw him, we interviewed his mother, and she said, we know the problem, but what can my family do? Because we have to farm, we have to dig, we have to go to the field, and we know it's dangerous, but we're risking our lives every time we do. And so that's when Jerry and I said to each other, we need to do something much bigger than an article. We need, we need to investigate this. And how did you, uh, Jerry, perhaps you could answer this, how did you go about conducting your research? How many people, uh, survivors, did you speak with uh, for your book? Um. The reporting that we did was essentially grassroots reporting. Um, we did it by traveling throughout the country from north to south and east to west, um, just going from village to village and asking people, do you have a bomb problem? Have you had uh, problems with bomb accidents? I can't begin to guess how many people we talked to, hundreds upon hundreds, from way up near the Chinese border in the north to down close to the Cambodian border in the south, along, all along the Vietnamese border on the east. and. Uh, along the Thai border in the West as well. Um, sort of the way that we began or followed up on the reporting is the United States actually kept track of most of the bombing raids that were conducted. And in around 2000, the Clinton administration gave this bombing data to the Lao government, the Cambodian government, and the Vietnamese government, since we bombed those countries as well, it, to help them clear up this UXO after the fact. And the Lao government, with help from other aid groups, put together a series of maps 
showing the places in the country that had been most heavily bombed. And we essentially took those bombing maps and went to the areas of highest concentration and just asked people what sort of problems they had. Karen Coates, go back 50 years ago. I mean, there are many people who are watching or listening to this broadcast right now who have no idea what happened. Why did this bombing campaign begin? Tell us the history of the U.S. bombing of Laos. It's a complicated question, but really it was a two-pronged uh, air war. One of the um, primary goals was to basically wipe out the transmission of people and supplies through the Ho Chi Minh Trail um, between North Vietnam and South Vietnam, which went through Laos. And then the other part was to aid our allies in the North against a communist insurgency.